Hello, welcome to this uh, ongoing Holly and Six tutorial series. And today we're talking about how sounds are collected together inside Hallian and made usable. So let's just dive straight in with an example. Here we have the program table and you can store up to 128 programs in Hallian. Almost all of the numbers in Hallian are obscenely big. Don't worry about the maximum amount of things that you can do. You're never going to hit any of them. It's insane. Load a program. Right click load program and uh, we'll load this aftermath preset. Here it is in our program slot. And you can see, I shouldn't have used the word slot actually because that has its own um, context. If I press a key on the keyboard, we don't hear any sound because the program's not been put in a slot. So slots are the basically like loading the sound into memory. So here they are stored and ready to go. We drag the program into a slot and now that sound is available to us. If I press the same uh, key on the keyboard, now we get a sound. You can have up to 64 slots, regardless of the fact that you've got up to 64 and you can play them all simultaneously if you're insane enough to do so. You can only edit or see one of them at any given time. So this, is the aftermath program that we can see. If I load a second program, Africa Brass, still the same sound in the slot rack. Now I'll drag Africa Brass up here. And now because this is the currently selected slot, this is the currently displayed information. So this is your program and this is your slot. Each slot is assigned to a MIDI channel. So here we see port A MIDI channel 1 and here this is currently assigned to MIDI channel 2. If I change that when I hit the key on the keyboard now it's playing both sounds simultaneously. Just mute aftermath a minute because it's a bit dominant. There it is. Now even though we can hear both sounds we can still only edit one of them at a time. Let's have a quick look at the slot rack up here. This allows us to change the size of each of the individual slots. This allows us to sort our slots by those methods. We can mute individual slots, solo them. It's all pretty straightforward stuff. This is where we can choose our output destination. Hallian has 32 outputs. So by default, they go to output one. And by clicking on the little load program drop down over here, we can have a look through the internal Hallian browser. You can also, and this is kind of cool, if I open Media Bay, just move Hallian out of the way for the moment. So this is Media Bay. We just select a, a sound. Bring Hallium back, pick that sound up out of Media Bay. Basically, any sample can be dragged into Hallium and it will load it as an instrument. How cool is that? So now, this fella down here, this is the program that Hallium has constructed by default in order to play that sound. So if I mute the other two and set the MIDI channel, there you go. spread it right away across the keyboard. So here are our slots and inside the slot is the program. So let's have a look at the aftermath program, mute the others. Okay, got all sorts of stuff going on there. Underneath the program is the layer and we can have any number of layers. In Hellion 6 we can have any number of layers. I think there are limits in Sonic. The layer is indicated by this little uh, sandwich icon. So the guitar, bass and vox, these folders here are layers. And they're basically folders. They, they, they allow you to collect uh, 
like like-minded information together. So we've got the guitar layer. Now a brief word on layers, they're not mandatory. You can have a program, as in the case of this sample that we imported over here, sounds perfectly happily without a layer at all. So it's an organizational tool. Very important to bear in mind. Let's go back to Aftermath. So inside the layers, which you are encouraged to use, we then find other components. These ones with the little MIDI symbol are um, mini modules. So this is an LFO, and there we can see the LFO. All sorts of different kinds of MIDI modules, and we can access them from up here, the Create New MIDI Module. And then there's like loads of stuff in here. We'll get to all of this in later tutorials. In addition to MIDI modules, so that's that one covered. And there's layers. We've got zones. So it's this um, kind of waveform shape. And all of these are zones. So that symbol there is telling us that this is a sample zone click on the button. Those are the five different types of zones that you can have. Each one of these is basically different, a different synthesis engine. So we've got like traditional synths, samplers, a uh, granular uh, synthesizer, organ and wavetable synth. So those are the five different types of zones. Each zone uh, has its own voice. So when we're talking about polyphony, uh, one zone equals one voice. And this thing that we loaded down here, when we dragged that sample in, by default, that created a sample zone. And if we drilled in here, we would eventually find the sample and be able to, there it is, edit it and do what we want with it. So we're gonna spend a large part of the time during this tutorial series talking about zones, that's where all the good stuff lives. And the one final component we have is bus, the bus. And that's this little symbol up here. And you can create any number of buses and they are routing mechanisms. Take all of these pieces of information, channel them all together, send them through the bus. Then those buses feed into that bus. So when we've got like vocals, you'll have all of your harmonies feeding into a harmony bus. The harmony bus will feed into the vocal master bus. The master bus will feed into the output bus. And we have exactly that concept here. Hallian works in a strict top-down mechanism. So the data flows through the program from the top. For the most part, at any level at which you specify a new value for any configuration data in Hallian, that new value takes over from there and will propagate um, to all objects below. So it's, a, it's like a king of the hill concept. There are exceptions to that and we don't want to get into the, the, the minutiae at this point. We're having a very like wide angled view uh, of, the, of Hallian in its entirety. But if you have, bear in mind as a concept that data flows from the top to the bottom and information is restored is, is stored uh, through all of these layers until it's overwritten and then that new value takes over and takes it from there. Buses are a means by which you can kind of circumvent that routing and say, well, I want to send this information over here regardless of what the, uh, the, 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 the structural, the tree structural kind of hierarchy of my objects is. In later tutorials that we're um, about to embark on, we're going to be using these concepts a lot and loading um, patches into programs and dragging them into the slots and then edit, edit, editing them in the, in the program uh, view. And so I thought it was important to have this kind of general introduction to each of these concepts and then we're not quite so overwhelmed when we start drilling into some of them. And that'll do us for this one. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.